what we did last year was we ran a pretty cool project for a, uh, a company here in Scandinavia with a pretty big machine park, and they wanted to get some help on uh, analyzing their data. So when I think about IoT, I think about two different things. I think about IoT that, that people want to give as an offering to their customers, and IoT that they do for themselves in order to analyze their business. And the second part is very much simpler because no one's ever done it before, but it's pretty simple. The first part is everyone's going to be want to be the first guy to deliver the, the smart toaster or whatever. So some Chinese guy is going to make an IoT toaster that needs internet connection to work, and they're going to hack your entire home. We don't really like that part because it's not that much data, it's not very advanced, but it's very complicated in terms of uh, distribution. Our part is more like, all right, so you have a couple of machines somewhere in the world. They're going to be connected. They're going to have some sensors on them. They're going to do some things. And you want to record the data and, and learn from it and advance your business, you know, research development kind of things. So we, we put together a project. From this project, I created a, a workshop that we are currently running as, like, people can hire us to come and show them how it works. And I also did this presentation for three hours. And those uh, sessions were for a, uh, a uh, conference called TechX that Microsoft, Microsoft held uh, three weeks ago. If you look it up on YouTube, you can find those sessions. So if you like what I show you today, you can look at the full three hours. It's one part Ma Azure Machine Learning, one part Power BI, one part IoT. So the final one is the one we're going to focus on today. So what I did was I had a conversation with my colleague Martin, and he told me, you know what would be pretty cool if you can't have devices with you? Build a parking house, like a parking garage. Uh, I think by this time, most of you have visited Emporia, and they have those cool lights in the ceiling that shows you which spots are open. Those are a godsend, right? Like, have you ever turned into a parking garage, and it's almost full, and you see a parking spot? And you go there, and it turns out there's a motorcycle there, <laughs> and you can't actually park there. You have to go out and start over. This solves this problem. Can you, can you understand this picture? Like, let's say you drive in from this way, right? You have the choice of either going in this way or going in this way. And you can see, all right, so there's one there, and there's one there. So it says here in Swedish, Leda Platze. So free, free parking spots. There's one here, and there's one there. So I built this, and as you can tell, I'm not a front end developer professionally. I do back-end stuff. I do it pretty well. This is OK. You can at least click on them. Um, so now this, this street or this lane has, has another spot on it. So these are, these are not actual parking spots, right? I've, I've, I've added a layer of abstraction where I click on it and emulate that a car is placed here or it leaves. Everyone gets that concept, right? But if you think about it, if I solve the problem of connecting to these sensors or have these sensors push data to me, that is all I have to do. The, the rest of this program will work the same way. There's going to be some information coming from these, and I can listen to it, and then I can react on it. So the first thing we see about reacting on this data is that every one of these stupid images listens to itself being clicked on. I click on number 10 here. Number 10 turns green. I click on it again, it turns red. The other ones, nothing happens. However, for this control over here, this understands that when I click on the ones on, that's close to it, it, turned, it goes up or down, while the other one listens to these ones. And I also have one for the entire parking floor. And it doesn't care which one it is. Now what I did was, all right, so, so this is pretty cool. I can just play around with this and see that I, I, I I can listen to events and so on. Not very advanced. What I wanted to do, I wanted to connect this to different types of, of uh, uh, listeners, or what you want to call it, things that can consume these events, depending on you know, what my customers are interested in seeing, what they can do with their data. One of the first ones that people are interested in is I want to record everything that happens. So let's say I have a, I have a machine with a saw on it, and its only purpose is to, is to cut uh, two by fours, you know, boards. I want to cut boards with this machine. So it starts up the drill, the drill starts spinning, it goes down, it cuts the board, and it goes back up. That's all it does. And it doesn't tell me I've cut a board. It tells me right now, at this millisecond, I'm doing exactly this. And then I have to listen to it, maybe a thousand times per second. And from that, I have to determine, did you start cutting a board 
did you stop cutting a board? As, as soon as I figure that problem out, I can take the stream of a thousand events per second and turn it into actions. Right now it started, right now it ended. And then I can compare, all right, how much energy did you spend during that time that you were cutting this board? And I can create a stream of board cutting instead and analyze that because that's what I'm really interested in. And one of the things you can see when you do that is you can see, okay, uh, after you've cut a thousand boards, you need more energy to cut the next one. Why is that? I don't know. Let's look into that. Oh, it turns out that the saw, the saw blade, it uh, degenerates. It's, uh, it gets worse. It's not as sharp anymore. It needs more energy to, to go one, one turn. And what they, uh, what they can do with that is, okay, when this hits 20% over what we start with, we, we need to switch this saw. That's what perhaps you could learn from that. So one of the first ways we even figure out what do we want to do in our IoT project is to record everything. So our program has that, all right, right now I'm sending it to an event hub. Let's, let's uh, place every event in my database. I just click this, and I can't show you it now because we don't have enough time, but when I have a couple of these events, right, no matter if it's open or closed, this gets sent as a batch job to my database. And that's great. All I have to do is figure out how do I connect to your IoT device, in this case, a, a parking garage spot. I have to get that information as a stream, and then all I have to do is say, okay, there's some stored procedure over here, you can call it with this table as an argument, and it gets stored there, and that problem is solved forever. My customer doesn't have to think about that anymore. Now they can record everything they do with this machine or whatever it might be. Some other things I want, uh, might want to do, I. Uh, uh, when I was doing this demonstration before, actually I could show you perhaps this. I don't know if anyone in this room has ever tried out Azure Machine Learning. Hands up. One. Uno. Has anyone uh, been trying out machine learning or, or data mining in any other sense using Spark or something like that? All right. So Azure Machine Learning is a pretty simple way. It's not very, you can't really do complex models with it, but you can do a lot of things like turn into useful stuff pretty simply. So one of the things I did was I built a model that when you tell it uh, the, the hour and the minute and what kind of a car just showed up in your parking garage, you get an estimate of how long it's going to stay there. That might be useful, might not be. But the model works. And what I built from that is I built a web service. I just say that use the same model, but use it as a web service here. So I put that into my program here this morning. Let's see if it still works. All right, let's say I have a sedan and I park it here. This debug window is going to show me, I estimate that this car is going to be parked for 71 minutes. Again, not maybe not super useful in every sense of the word, but it works and it's cool and I like that. All right. So right now I'm using just the event hub. The event hub is, uh, is Microsoft's first version or their light version of an IoT hub. Uh, it allows you to send messages to it. That's pretty much it. And I can have a, a couple of these windows up and I can send events to it. So the event hub lives in the cloud or on the internet somewhere and it takes messages in a JSON format. And then other things can connect to that event hub and listen to those events. One of the ways uh, that we show this is, all right, so let's see if I still have internet. Nope, my internet connection died. Whoops. Here's another problem when you work with the cloud. You need to have internet for it to work. That is really weird because my machine learning project still works, but somehow I don't have internet. That is so weird. Let's see what happens if I delete this and put this in. Any questions so far on what we do or how we think about IoT devices of this kind? Yeah, it's not working out. This program is probably going to crash. It's a sad day. Yep. You should probably not run your IoT project over 4G. All right, so anyway, this, uh, just in summary, this is an event hub in, uh, in Azure. And Azure is, is Microsoft's 
sort of cloud platform with a bunch of different services. And he, over here you can see that this morning something happened and then during the day today I've been looking at this demo and trying to work out what I would show today. And just before I arrived here we had some events. So you can see here basically this is incoming messages went up from my program. And what I do is I send that through something called Stream Analytics, which is another Azure service. And what this service does is, uh, if you know SQL and that kind of languages, this is a SQL-like language which help you write uh, analytic queries over uh, moving data or data streams. So the data that comes from, in this case, I call it FooCafe Stream Analytics input. This is my event hub that I sent data to. This comes in here. And I want to figure out, okay, for each parking spot, I want the last status. And then I want to only do the ones where, uh, where it's uh, open. So whenever something becomes open, this figures out, oh, th if the open status was the last status for this parking spot, I want to add that to the list that I'm going to do a count star on. So that way I get the current uh, number of parking spots which are open. And I get that every five minutes. So every five minutes this is sent out somewhere. And in this case I send it out to something called Power BI. So according to this thing I have, all right, so, so this program I, I ran now I only had 40 spots. So this is not really true. <laughs> so uh, I think I have some data from before that's still lingering. And what's cool about this is this gets up updated every five minutes as long as there's any parking spots. And the cool thing about Power BI is apparently it works in your Android phone or Windows phone or whatever. I don't know if you can see this, but this has the same number. This is connected too. So if I click this a little bit more, this is going to update in five minutes, and I also get the same thing here. And that's something our customers, especially the ones who are, are not technicians or, or developers like me, they like that because they get, all right, I want to see this number and I want it live. I want to see how many of my machines are up and running, how many you know, of these measurements are, am I doing every minute. I put this query together for them, I set it up once, and I just make sure that the event hub connection works from the program, and they're gonna get that data, and it's gonna be updated in real time. And it doesn't ever stop, because it's not something hosted on-prem. All right, does anyone have any questions on this part of the presentation? Or maybe it's something you wanna try out? I have the source code for the program if you wanna change something, or debug it, or. Yeah, so this, again, this is why, uh, why I like this demo over Microsoft's uh, standard material, because they only show you this is possible. But this is actually something you can click on the buttons and you can debug the code right in here. And I, uh, for those who are interested in what this uh, looks like, uh, we don't have that much time, but these demos are online on YouTube. You can find them. You can ask me later if you want a direct link. And I can also show you some more afterwards if you're interested. So basically what I have in my program is I... Uh, I have some, uh, some logic here where I send in, uh, what, what do I want my parking garage to look like? And I, uh, I hook up, uh, I have some function to add every one of these. So for each parking spot in my image, I had 40 in this case. I, I set up an image and I have that image create a listener to itself. So I'm using something called reactive extensions, which is basically a way of doing uh, asynchronous lists. So they're, they're, they're uh, iterables, but they're in real time, and they change all the time. So I set up, uh, let's see here. First, there's some mathematics just to make sure that they're not all on top of each other. And then there's some uh, logic of connecting them to what I call lanes. So like I had two lanes. You can either, either go in this way or this way. And yeah, all right. And from there, I create what's called observables. So... Oh, what's happened here? So in this case, I create an observable called clicks. I don't know if you can read that, but that's an I observable of parking spots. And this is only, and the way I create this in this case is, yeah, this is not what you're gonna do in a real project, it's just from the mouse button event arguments. When I click on this image, you're gonna have a stream of clicks on you. And then the parking spot itself subscribes to this stream of data and says, all right, when I'm clicked on, I'm gonna switch status. That's what turned it from green to red. If I comment this out, it's gonna stay green. And then I can do some more advanced stuff with that. I can ha uh, add another class called parking spot events and I can say that, hey, here's, an, here's a variable and this is not an I observable of parking spots. This is an I observable of parking spot events. 
I take this parking spot and from it I select some stuff. And then what I do is I, in my program, I have an, a list and I add every one of these observables to that list. So I have a list of 40 observables of parking spot events. And what's cool about that is then I can run something called merge. And then I get, instead of a list of 40 of these, I have one with all the events from all 40. And then I can add so that my, when I subscribe to that, I say, all right, whenever there's 10 events from any of these, send it to a database or something. Let's see that in action. All right, so I, I, I create something I call my big fat merged observable, which is basically my list of parking spot events dot merge. So what I have then, instead of having a list of my observable parking spots events, I just have the, the one observable. And now I can subscribe to that. The same way that every parking spot subscribes to itself, this program, for example, uh, take, uh, take each of these, but only when the, the checkbox called event to database is checked. Take five of these, run it on a different thread so that if my database connection is slow or something, it doesn't freeze up the UI. Uh, thread, and then send this. So this is now a list of parking spot events. Since I buffered five of them, instead of having five events, I have a list of some number of events. And I send that to my database function. And all that function does is take this list, add it to a data table, have that data table be the arguments of a stored procedure. So it's sort of like a batch insert. And uh, if you want, you could put this to 500,000 and see how long it takes to put that into my Azure database and kill my 4G <laughs> payment plan. Uh, that's a, actually, if you have a good connection and you want to try this out and see how much data you can pull through it, that's actually a great way. You just put this really high and you make sure that this thing creates a lot of events. And then you can tune it and see, all right, can I get a million transactions per second? Can I get 10 million? So this is actually a very simple way to just give a, a proof of concept of what's possible. I'm going to put this at 1,500, even though then I have to click a lot. And I can do other things. Now I have the same big, fat, merged observable. Here's my save to event hub function. Works the same way. Instead of that, I send each, of one, each one uh, individually. I don't buffer them. Here's my uh, Azure machine learning. Same thing. Take the merged observable. Only take it if this checkbox is checked. And I also, I don't want the one where they leave. I'm not interested in trying to figure out how long they're going to park if they're leaving. I just want the ones where they park. So I put the status of my argument here. And this uh, is an asynchronous call. So there's some special code there, but the same way I put this, uh, I also have a little debug box. So I show the actual output of that instead of showing some uh, message box or something, I just put it in there. And then you can do other things as well. <laughs> 